Now let's look at some of the diseases that can be prevented by vaccines. These diseases are the reason we give children vaccines. Although we do not see these diseases as often as we used to, they are still present. Many have made a resurgence due to waning immunization efforts. It is important to vaccinate each and every eligible patient against these diseases to prevent them from spreading. First, we'll look at a photo for a moment, and you'll see and hear clues that will help you to guess what these diseases may be. These are the same photos we've been using to teach about these diseases for a long time, so you might recognize some. Try to guess which disease it is, then we'll see the answer. This disease is caused by spores that are found in soil. The toxins cause painful tightening of the muscles, which spread all over the body. The disease is not contagious, and one in every ten people infected will die. Can you guess the disease? If you answered tetanus, also known as lockjaw, you are correct. Tetanus toxin affects the nervous system, first causing neck and jaw muscles to clench, then moving to the rest of the muscles. This infant's muscles are in spasm from the tetanus toxoid. Today, about 10% of victims die, but before the 1950s, it was much closer to 100%. This disease may cause a fever, runny nose, and or joint pain, and half of all infective cases are mild or asymptomatic. Exposure in utero causes birth defects such as blindness, deafness, and intellectual disabilities. Can you guess the disease? Rubella is the correct answer. This child was blinded from rubella infection. Rubella is spread by coughing and sneezing, just like a cold. However, a contagious person often won't know they have rubella. Rubella exposure during pregnancy causes birth defects and can cause heart defects in one out of every five babies who are exposed. This disease may have the symptoms of a low-grade fever, loss of appetite, and headache. 30% of cases also will have peritonitis or inflammation of the salivary glands, which is depicted in this picture. Adults may have even more complications. Can you guess the disease? The correct answer is mumps. The mumps virus most typically causes inflammation of the salivary glands called peritonitis. Other complications can include inflammation of the testicles or ovaries, meningitis, kidney, joint, or heart inflammation. There is no cure for mumps, so treatment is supportive. Many times, this disease is asymptomatic or mild. 1% of cases are paralyzed, and of those paralyzed, 5% of children and 30% of adults die. What is the disease? If you answered polio, you are correct. Many people with contagious polio don't know they have the disease. Polio is spread by the fecal or route, which means someone puts contaminated fingers, food, or water into their mouth. Before the vaccine, warnings were issued during outbreaks for children to avoid swimming pools, beaches, and water fountains. Like many diseases, polio is much more likely to be serious for adults than for children. The oral polio vaccine was used in the United States until 2000. Although it prevented natural polio disease, a small number of children would get sick with polio from the vaccine. Switching to an injectable vaccine eliminated these vaccine-related cases of polio. This disease can cause a rash, fever, pink eye, and cough. Complications of this disease are diarrhea, pneumonia, and encephalitis. This disease is also highly fatal in people who are malnourished. What is it? If you said measles, you are correct. The measles rash is distinctive, beginning at the hairline and moving down over the face and body to the arms and legs in an outward pattern. The rash usually begins about two weeks after infection, but the infected person already has been contagious for a few days by the time the rash appears. Measles is one of the most contagious diseases. Together with chickenpox, it spreads very easily to people who are not immune. The World Health Organization estimates that measles killed 164,000 people in 2008. In 2011, there was ongoing outbreaks of measles in Europe and Africa, which resulted in a high number of imported cases in the United States. 
85% of the outbreaks in the U.S. during the first half of 2011 involved travelers or visitors who didn't have a documented history of vaccination. This disease may start with mild symptoms, such as a sore throat and or fever. If left untreated, the throat may even swell closed. Of cases, one in five children under five years of age die. What is this disease? The answer? Diphtheria. The hallmark of diphtheria is a thick coating over the back of the throat and tonsils. This coating adheres strongly to the skin and tears the skin if it is removed. If the coating extends down into the larynx and trachea, it can suffocate its victim. Childhood vaccines must be reinforced with boosters to maintain protection in adulthood. In the early 1990s, an outbreak of diphtheria in Russia sickened and killed many adults, while children seemed to be protected by their vaccines. This outbreak resulted in renewed efforts to provide booster doses to adults in Russia. This disease starts out locally, such as in otitis media, also known as inflammation of the inner ear, but can spread to the brain as meningitis or to the voice box as epiglottitis. This child has invasive haemophilus influenza type B infection, called Hib for short. Hib lived in the noses and inner ears of most children before the vaccine became common. Most children were able to defeat the infection, but a few would get invasive disease where the germ passed into the blood and caused serious infections of the brain, meningitis, and voice box. As late as the 1990s, up to one child in 20 with invasive hip disease died. This disease may show as a runny nose, low fever, fits of coughing, a whoop sound when breathing in, or turning blue from lack of air. It also may last 10 weeks or longer, giving it the name of the 100-day cough. Can you guess what disease may cause these symptoms? The answer, pertussis, or whooping cough. Whooping cough gets its name from the whoop sound that children make when they are gasping for air after a long fit of coughing. This child has been coughing so hard with pertussis that he broke blood vessels in his eyes and cheeks. Whooping cough can be treated with antibiotics, which means the victim can no longer spread the disease, but lingering toxins from the germ make the symptoms last for months, even after the germs are killed. Most people can spread the disease before they are sick, making antibiotics an ineffective way to control whooping cough. Pertussis is most dangerous to infants, but infants aren't fully protected from whooping cough by their vaccines until 12 to 18 months of age. That's why it's so important for parents and other household contacts to get booster vaccines so they protect themselves and can't spread the infection to the baby. This is called cocooning. We'll talk more about that later. This disease may cause fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, nausea and or vomiting, joint pain, dark urine, gray stools, and or jaundice. It's hepatitis B, and this woman is not pregnant. She has fluid building up in her abdomen from the illness. The buildup of fluid is called ascites. If adults are exposed to hepatitis B, many will get sick and then get over it. However, babies who get exposed to hepatitis B in infancy are more likely to have ongoing sickness their whole lives, and many eventually die from complications of the sickness. This is why hepatitis B vaccinations start right away at birth. Hepatitis B can be spread by contact with blood and some other body fluids even after it's dried on a surface for many days. For this reason, hepatitis B vaccinations are also given to healthcare workers. This picture shows an infant with a secondary infection caused by a certain disease. This disease can cause a runny nose and an itchy rash with blisters. The patient may also be increasingly tired have headaches, and or fever for several days. Do you know what it is? It's chickenpox, also known as varicella. While not usually serious, chickenpox can weaken the body and make it easier for other germs to take advantage, such as with this child in the picture who has a bacterial infection on top of varicella infection. 
Before the vaccine, about 10,000 kids were hospitalized each year with complications of chickenpox. Like measles, varicella is extremely contagious, so infection was almost universal before the vaccine. After it subsides, the infection goes dormant in nerve cells, and it can come back years or decades later as a painful disease called shingles. Varicella vaccination has only been in use for about 10 years in the U.S., but preliminary data indicates that it also helps reduce shingles in vaccinated people. This disease may start as an ear or sinus infection, but can become more invasive. It can cause meningitis in babies and pneumonia in adults. What is the disease? It's pneumococcal. Pneumococcal infection often starts out as an ear infection, but like Hib, it can become invasive and cause meningitis or a blood infection. This picture shows the brain of a person who died of a pneumococcal infection. The yellow in the middle of the picture is pus. In adults, pneumococcus most often causes pneumonia, especially in people over 65 years old. This disease affects 60% of adults. Since the infection is so common, the likelihood of exposure is high once a person is sexually active. To prevent the disease, the vaccine needs to be given before a person becomes sexually active. What is it? These images show condyloma or genital warts which are caused by certain strains of human papillomavirus, HPV. The HPV vaccine will help protect against the three most common types of cervical cancer, as well as head, neck, and anal cancers and genital warts in both sexes. Even though more than half of adults have been infected with HPV, many have no symptoms. For this reason, the HPV vaccine is recommended for children at age 11. The vaccine can prevent the most common strains of HPV virus, but has no effect once the person has been exposed, so it needs to be given before becoming sexually active. This recommendation has caused concern among some parents who don't want to think about their 11-year-old children needing protection against sexually transmitted infections. It's true that most 11-year-old children don't need it, but that's exactly the reason for recommending it at 11. By the time it's needed, it's too late for the vaccine. Parents who are concerned that vaccination could promote promiscuity should be aware that the vaccine does not protect against any other sexually transmitted infections, but can protect their child from certain strains of HPV in the future. Well, we've seen the diseases that vaccines prevent, but do vaccines really work? Let's take a look. This chart shows the decrease since the introduction of vaccine for each disease. Most of the diseases have decreased more than 95% since vaccines were introduced. So far, smallpox is the only disease totally eradicated by vaccines. Although there were no cases of diphtheria or polio in 2006, these diseases are not eradicated as they are only a plane right away and still exists in many less developed countries. This is why it is so important to vaccinate to keep disease incidence low. It's important to note that one of our weakest vaccines is the acellular pertussis vaccine. However, the Tdap booster was licensed about the time this slide was made to address that issue. To illustrate the point, we can look at it another way, with a graphic view using Hib as an example. As the chart shows, invasive Hib disease, when the germ gets more aggressive and causes problems like meningitis, dropped significantly when the vaccine was introduced about 20 years ago.